again, this is Kyle. Let's write some code. Today we're going to create multi-window desktop applications using Electron. Um, and it's just going to be a simple app that just communicates uh, through multiple windows just to give you a sense of uh, how Electron uh, can kind of piece things together. Um, so the first thing you want to have is uh, Node.js or IO.js installed. Um, and I'll put a link in the description uh, to an earlier video where I show how to do that. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install uh, Electron uh, pre-built here and save it to our dev dependencies. Now that it has finished installing, we can go into our package JSON and we're going to add this start script here um, and do electron dot to reference the current directory because we're going to just run our application in our current directory. And then we're going to change the main script here. We're going to call this app.js and um, this will be the main entry point to our script. And so we're just going to call it app because this is going to be the entire application. And now we can go ahead and uh, start creating our first window. So the first thing we want to do is get our reference to our app by saying require app. And then we're going to get a, um, this browser window class so we can create new browser windows. So we're just going to say require browser dash window. Um, and then now we can say when the app is ready, everything has started up, um, we're going to call this function and we're going to create our main window here. So we're going to do that by assigning it to this main window uh, variable here. And we're going to say new browser window. And we'll just give it a width and height of 800 by 600, just to make it simple. OK, so now that we have this main window, we need to load up the index.html file, or the HTML file, rather, um, that it will use. And so we're going to do this by doing file. And then we're just going to use the current directory. And we're going to append on, this will be our main window, so let's call this main.html. And now we can go ahead and create this main.html file. And we'll just say main. Great. Now, so now uh, we have just a simple um, application started up. And I can go ahead and run um, npm start. And uh, it will start up our application here. Um, which will just load this main window. Cool. Now, a useful thing to do when you're working on a um, an app is uh, to lo open up the the dev uh, the Chrome Dev Tools, and so we can do that by on our main window here. We can say open Dev Tools, and we can call this function. And so now, when we do npm start, and it opens up our window, uh, we have access to the Dev Tools here, so we can see console messages. We can inspect the page and do all the same kind of debugging you would do in a browser. Let's create a menu bar here. So basically when we click up here at the top, uh, it will give us our own menu um, in which we can um, do things with. And so to do that, um, in our main here, um, I'm going to uh, add a script tag and I'm gonna say require main.js. And I'm doing it this way. Um, there's a different way you can do it. Uh, you can do script source and then reference your main.js just like this. And this is more frequent in uh, client side applications. Um, the reason I prefer to do it this way is that it puts us in the context of a node like app. Um, so Electron has two contexts that you got to be aware of um, is, you know, is it operating like a browser or is it operating kind of like a server? And so I prefer doing this way because the paths are, are, it makes the pass a lot simpler and it puts it in a more node-like uh, context that just makes things a little simpler. Um, but this way is perfectly fine too. Just be aware that your main script, uh, the context or the this of the script is going to be the window. So now that we're requiring this main uh, in our main.html file, um, let's go ahead and create this main.js file. This main.js file is going to be handling all the JavaScript for our main.html window. Um, and so the first thing we want to do is we want to create a menu. So when this window is open, um, we have a menu here at the top. And so we can do that by saying var menu require menu. But uh, this is an, uh, an API from Electron that we can just require, and uh, which would work perfectly fine if we're here in the app. 
But you have to be aware that Electron has uh, two processes running. It has a renderer process and it has a the main process. And so this app is kind of, it's the main process running. It's, it's the main thing going where since we've loaded this um, main.js script uh, in the, the browser, it's going to be running on the renderer uh, process. So we can't just simply require menu here. We have to require the menu from the, the main process or our apps uh, process. And so to do that, we create a remote. And so we can just say require remote. And using this remote, uh, we're able to require, uh, um, call the require function, which will require it from uh, this main process uh, here. Um, so just be aware of that whenever you see remote, um, that's what it's doing. So there are a couple of ways to create a menu. We can go ahead and require a menu dash item and create all the items individually. Otherwise, uh, we can create our menu using this uh, helper function that's on the menu class here. Um, it's called uh, menu.build from template. And what you do is you pass in this structured uh, JavaScript object um, with the, uh, the menu uh, structure that you want. And so the first item here, oh, sorry, this needs to actually be array because it's going to be uh, an array of menu items across the top here. If you see in this example here, we have Adam, file, edit, selection. And so the first item here is just going to be um, the, the name of the application. Um, let's fix that. There we go. Um, which I'm just going to call Electron just because the name of our application on um, on OSX is defined elsewhere. It's not defined here by this menu thing. So this really doesn't really matter because it's just going to be whatever the name of your application is. But using this, we can go ahead and create sub items by saying sub menu here. And we'll pass in another object here and we'll say label and we'll call this prefs because this will be the preferences. And then you can um, add these event handlers here. So when that preferences is clicked, uh, this thing will run. Um, so now that we have this uh, menu, we can attach it to our application by saying menu dot set application menu and giving it the menu. So now when we run npm start to start up our app, we will get our main window and we get our electron app with our prefs menu item and clicking does nothing at the moment. So let's make that click do something. Now we can go ahead here and we can require uh, uh, remote require a browser window here. We can create a new browser window and we can do all that, but that's that's not really that efficient. Um, a better way to do it is to manage all your windows here um, in your app. And so just create a new um, a new window here. And we're gonna say, this is gonna be called the prefs window. We'll say new browser window. And we're gonna make this small. Let's just say width 400, height 400. It's going to be a preferences. And then this part's important. We're going to say show false. So when this window is created on, um, on the app ready, um, it's not going to be shown. It's going to be hidden. And so now we can load a URL for um, this prefs window. Doing the same way we did for our main window here. But we'll call this prefs.html. Um, and another good way is, you know, some people can organize, uh, would organize uh, all their windows and maybe in separate folders um, based on, um, you know, what what part of the app that they're handling. I'm just creating it all here in this in the subfolder. Feel free to organize uh, your uh, your application however you choose. Um, so now that we have this prefs thing, this will be our preference window. Um, so now we have this preference window that gets created here on, on app, but it's hidden. And so we need a way to, um, to call and, and show that window when um, our menu item is clicked uh, down here. And to do that, uh, we, we use a thing called IPC, um, which is very similar to, uh, to remote. Um, it allows us to send... Uh, um, send calls back and forth between the two uh, processes. And so here when we click, we're going to say IPC send show prefs. And this is going to send a message up to, um, up to our app here in which we can catch. And so we want to do the same thing over here 
fair IPC, require IPC. And you notice here in, in the main, I'm just requiring IPC directly because we want to require the IPC from the renderer process, not from the main process here. And then over here, we want to require the IPC from the main process. So we just use, just require IPC. And so now with this, we can say IPC on when we get an event, and the event that we sent was show prefs. So when that, uh, when that window sends us this message called show prefs, we can then say prefs window show. We can call this function, and this will show our prefs window. So when I save, run npm start, opens up the window, creates our menu app, and we have this prefs here. And so now when we click it, it shows our preference uh, window. So now that we can send uh, messages from our main window um, up to our app and control the preference window, we want to have it so from the preference window uh, we can send messages back. Um, so to do that, I'm not going to create a separate script. I'm just going to do this directly in here. And so we can do the same thing, um, require IPC, because we want to send uh, these remote calls uh, back and forth. And then we're just going to jump back, and now we're just going to do straight up uh, client side JavaScript, um, just standard stuff you'd see in a browser. And so we're just going to say document, create element. Um, we're just going to create this button here. And the button text content is going to say uh, hide. We're going to hide this button or hide the preferences. And so then we're going to add an event listener here that when this button's clicked, we are going to send a message, IPC send, and we're going to say hide prefs. So we're going to call, uh, we're going to send this remote call that um, our app can catch to hide the preferences. And so the last thing we just need to do is just uh, append it to our document body here so that our button shows up on the preference page. And so now we have this hide preference we got to handle. And so we can just say copy this part, change this to hide. Change this to hide. And so now when it sends, we can catch this hide prefs call and we can hide the preference window. So we'll start up our app. We'll click here into preferences. And now when we click the hide button, it hides the preferences. Uh, so, you know, maybe we can refactor this. Uh, it doesn't really need to be um, two separate calls. We can say toggle prefs. And then we can just say if uh, prefs window is visible, then we want to hide. Otherwise, if it's not visible, then we want to show. So let's just make it a little simpler. And then we can just update our uh, main script here to just say toggle prefs and update our call here to toggle prefs. Now when we run our window, we can toggle the preference window open and hide it. So hopefully this has given you a good idea of how windows are created and managed in Electron and how you can send messages back and forth to each other, just to give you a better idea of how to best structure uh, your application. And if it has, uh, please share the video. I would really appreciate that. And um, subscribe if you want to see more videos. Okay, thanks again for watching. Thank <music> you.